Hey folks, it's your main man Sabado back again. I'm incredibly excited about this episode today. So welcome or welcome back to the channel. And I know that in most of my episodes, I talk about how excited I am. And so maybe I sh I'm either too excitable or I just shouldn't allow myself to get so excited. But today I'm incredibly excited because this week marks my first full year of early retirement. And I've got to tell you that when I go back and I look at the course of the year and a lot of what I've talked about on the channel and even the quality of the channel, things have just grown leaps and bounds. If you've been with me, rocking with me since the beginning, let me know what you think of just what's been going on on the channel or any of your um, any of your the revelations that you've had, personal revelations you know, that you've had over the last year as you've listened to me. Um, I've, I've talked about a bunch of stuff. We've had a bunch of conversation about uh, early retirement, my personal journey, some of the wisdom that I've gained from talking to different people and different experiences. I was able to culminate a lot of that into a, another video where I sit down with, with uh, a good friend of mine, Matt, the mortgage guy, and talk to him about my entire journey and to help with you getting to where it is you want to be in your life. And I do recognize that not everybody's able to retire early and it's not necessarily an expectation that we all do, but the expectation is that we all live our best lives. And so the purpose of this channel is really just to help you live the life that you want to lead, whatever that looks like. But today I want to talk specifically uh, about three pros and three cons that I experienced in early retirement. And some of them may surprise you, some of them may not, but it's I'm excited to share it because I can finally go back and say I'm I'm a bona fide retiree. I haven't worked in a year, haven't thought about working in a year. A lot of the personal journeys that I, that started when I retired early started to come to fruition. My peace of mind is enhanced. My I have less weight on my shoulders. Um, so I just, I'm just excited to talk to you about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so I'll start with the pros. I, I always think it's good to start with the positive stuff. And so the first one is, is I have more control of my time. When I was working, I always felt like I was rushing from A to B to C. It's almost like in the office where they say rushing from meeting to meeting. My life was a host of meetings. So I had to schedule time with my wife, schedule time with my friends, schedule time to play golf. And sometimes I found myself in these places where I didn't necessarily want to be, but I had scheduled the time to do that and couldn't do anything else in that time because that time was specifically for that, even when I didn't want it to be. And so now I have more time and, and just more control over what it is that I do. I, I, I know that I, when I'm going to record YouTube videos, but it could be any one of three or four days, and sometimes I can do two in one day. And, you know, you see that when you look at some of the shirts that I'm wearing, and it might be the same shirt in two or three videos, and it's not because I'm wearing the same shirt two or three days in a row, or I wear the same shirt every day. It's because I might have done two or three videos in that day, and then some days I don't record anything. Um, I, I, my exercising is, is more consistent than it's ever been in my life. Uh, because I think that it's it's really important to uh, take care of your health. And I, I always said that I have three priorities in retirement. My health, my relationship with my wife, and my time. And my health has improved. I just weighed myself today. And folks, when I started this channel, I was at about 262 pounds. I just weighed in this morning at 249.1. And I'm on the way down. It's been going down consistently for the past several months. So... I'm just incredibly excited about the ability to, to exercise, and I, I have time to, to, to really get into my hobbies. I, I went and played golf with, with a good friend of mine yesterday, and I didn't have the stress that I had before because I think being in the place where you had limited time, you really want to measure and hold yourself accountable to certain milestones, but anybody that plays golf knows that you can't do that unless you're you know Tiger Woods or Rory McIlroy or somebody who actually has some game. I walked away saying we hit some good shots. We hit more consistently better shots than I had hit in the past. And as long as I did that, I was happy because you know what? I'm probably going to play next week. This morning, I just finished um, harvesting some, some beans. We have two bean plants out there, and they're about seven feet tall. And I think if you look at one of my any one of my social media outlets, 
what you're going to see is you're going to see I have a whole bunch of stuff going on in the garden. I got a couple bean plants that are about eight feet tall and I'm, I'm, I'm picking beans on a daily basis. And my wife and I just had a conversation about one of the pieces of produce that had a caterpillar on it. I mean, it's, it's just, it's amazing. And, and trying to figure out what we're going to do with that caterpillar, as opposed to figuring out I wasted my time or I don't have the time to do X, Y, and Z. And the, one of the most important um, things that I've been able to do is really spend time giving back. And I, I know that when you look at these YouTube channels, and anybody that knows anything about YouTube knows that after a certain amount of subscribers or whatever the case is that, you know, you get monetized. And that's what you see a lot of these channels around. It's how do I build subscribers so I can monetize and get paid for them? But folks, I don't need to do this for the money. I do this because it's one of the ways that I look at giving back to the community and helping people that maybe look like me, people that don't look like me, people really that just want to be inspired. I have the opportunity to spend time every week to help inspire people. And it, 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 it's, it's incredibly humbling when I get comments about how what I'm talking about may inspire somebody. And, and it's funny because sometimes the content that I put up, I may not think it's that good. I may look and it has a small number of views or it doesn't seem like it's resonating. And then somebody will write a comment. I had a comment the other day where somebody said something to the effect that, when they listen to me, they listen to me in the mornings and I remind them of a good coach or a good friend when they hear my voice in the morning. And I, I just think it's incredible. I think it's incredibly humbling. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm hopefully and I'm gearing everything towards just providing hope. I, I talk a lot about early retirement because that happens to be my journey and where I could provide a little bit of expertise about what I did. But it really comes down to trying to help others live their best life. I saw an old friend in the grocery store the other day, and he talked about helping him coach. Um, he's also teaching a business class and having an experience in business or a background in business. I may be able to help him with that. But now all of these things come in where I have the opportunity to to potentially give back to the community. Um, and, and the last one I'll tell you that I'm really excited about as it relates to having more time is I finally got my application in for the Master Gardener program. And so then I'll not only be able to help people, my neighbors and my friends with gardening, I'll be able to go out to the schools and, and help schools build community gardens or different types of go to go to retirement communities and help help them take their gardening to the next level or going to lower income neighborhoods and really help with uh, uh, affecting that one of the social determ determinants of health, which is access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And so. I, I just, but without, if I didn't have the time, I wouldn't be able to do that. And I wouldn't have um, the capacity to, 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 to even consider those types of things. Uh, number two, I have incredibly less stress than I've ever had in my entire life. But about six months before I retired, I heard people talk about how they, they, their stress went down after they retired. And I always thought it was hogwash. Why did I think it was hogwash? Because I always had everything in my life more or less under control. And what I realized is having things under control is not the same thing as having less stress. Because in order to have things under control, you have to kind of wind yourself really, really tight to make sure that things don't slip out, of, slip through the cracks. And so I was so focused on not having things slip through the cracks that I was wound up really tight. And the people that I know, they recognize it. You know, they look at me now and they're like, hey, Sabado, man, you're just that retired cat. It's I can't even talk to you about this because you're so on a, on a different level than you were before. And but it's it's great because I just don't have the stress. I'm I'm sleeping about nine hours a night every night. It's it's a trip. Last night I had a dream that I went with some friends on a cruise ship. And we were out cruising. I was dreaming about being on vacation, but I felt like I was there. And I just had nine hours of this dream. And it was trials and tribulations because we get to the place and I get off the ship, go do a bunch of other stuff. And then I miss the ship and I have to get back to it. And I go and stay at a buddy's house at the place where I'm at. And, you know, it's just all of this stuff. I mean, not to digress and go too far into the dream. But it's just, it's, it's incredible because every night I'm having these dreams. I'm having dreams that are so good that I don't want to wake up from them. 
I, I, I mean, I guess none of us really want to wake up from a good dream, but I have those every night. So I usually go to bed about 1230, 1 o'clock, because I, I always want to make sure that the uh, the shorts that I have scheduled to come out, come out. But I get to bed, and then usually about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, I'm waking up. But in the meantime, I am out. I am deep six. It is just absolutely incredible. And I've, um, I, and all, you know, in full transparency, I did use my uh, alarm yesterday. I don't, I don't normally use an alarm. I, I don't, except for when I have something to do. And most of the time, I wake up before the alarm. But yesterday, I went to go play golf, and so I had to set an alarm. So full transparency, I did have to use the alarm. But I don't use the alarm every day, and I just wake up usually about the same time. I, I guess they call it your circadian rhythms. So my circadian rhythm game is on point, people. Um, the other thing that, that creates less stress for me is that when I go places, they're less crowded. Uh, the other night, my wife and I were trying to figure out what are we going to eat for dinner. And I said, why don't we order a pizza? Or order a pizza? And I said, well, I don't want to order a pizza because it's, you know, it, I, it's just one of those things. I just didn't feel like ordering a pizza. But I said, I can go to Costco and pick up their frozen pizza. And they have these, two, they have these frozen pizzas where it's two pizzas for like ten ninety nine, and they're really good. I went to Costco, picked up the pizzas, brought them back. I was home in 20 minutes. I go to the grocery store. I went, and it's funny, I went to the grocery store on Sunday, and one of the things my wife and I talked about when I got back was how crowded the grocery store was because I'm usually there on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, and there's nobody in there. It might be me or 10 of my closest friends, so I'm in, I'm out. And I usually do it after doing something else or in, and I'm on my way to doing something different. So it's it's just less crowded and there's no, I just don't have that stress. And, and, I, and I think that lack of stress and the ability to sleep has lowered, my, has lowered my cortisol levels to, and I don't know if folks know this, but cortisol is the hormone that causes weight gain. And so, and cortisol levels, and again, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a doctor, never played one on TV and never played one on YouTube, but the cortisone levels are your lowest between four and five in the morning. And so, but the more you sleep, the more your cortisol levels reduce and then the less weight that you retain as a result of having high cortisol levels. And so with having this low stress, I'm able to sleep a lot better and my cortisol levels are lower, and so my weight control is getting better. So it's it's kind of this whole mind-body connection that you hear people talk about. And I know the holistic stuff is is always kind of, people have differing opinions about that, and I get it, but I'm here. I'm, I'm 52 years old. You're looking at me. I mean, I'm a big guy because I'm six foot eight, and I've, I work out uh, three times a week, four times a week. But I don't have a bunch of, if I stood up, you wouldn't see a spare tire or anything like that, which, and it's, it, I know guys that are my age, that are my size, that are 325, 350 pounds. So it's, it, it really plays a difference because I have time to be mindful about things and it's not stress, it's being mindful and just understanding how am I eating? What do I want to eat? Um, let me think through situations and then when things happen, I still can, can think through them. Uh, which brings me to uh, the third and final pro. And again, there's there's a bunch of pros to retirement beyond these three. But uh, out of respect for those of you that had to uh, take a full hour to watch my, my interview with Matt, the mortgage guy, um, I'm trying to keep this as concise and to the point as possible just because I respect your time. And I know there's a lot of other places that you can be and you're here with me. And I appreciate that. But I want to move on. But the third pro is is increase mental clarity. I don't think I've ever been as clear mentally as I am now. And that's because I have the capacity to think. I have the capacity to work things through. I have the capacity to figure out where are some of the opportunities for me to be a better human. You know, I was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday and I taught one of the things that I appreciate about him is he's not retired, but he's I, I call him semi retired because he really controls his own life, is doing what he wants to do and is really living his best life. Um, but one of the things we talked about is one of the ways that I've always wanted to get better. One of the ways that I focus on wanting to get better is by executing or operating with a higher level of compassion or maybe a little more patience, because what would happen for me 
would be if I made the assessment that somebody wasn't moving forward with me or somebody was working against me and, or, or we couldn't get to an agreement on, on some type of disagreement, then I said, you know, forget it, I'm out. I'm not, I'm not going to deal with this. And it's not on everything, but it's on some things and because I didn't have time to, to work through the situation. But now with this capacity, I sit, I'm able to think about what's this situation about? How do we get there? And it's almost like, um, it's almost like if your cup is full, you can't put any more water into it because the water is going to run over. And so you almost have to drink some of that water in order for that water, for your cup to be able to take on more water. And so that water represents the amount of capacity that you have or the cup the, the fullness of the cup represents the capacity. And so as you drink more water, what happens? You have more room, more stuff that you can put in and it's easier to process that and you can store it until later and then come back to it. So I've, I've, I've really gotten the capacity to think uh, these channels. I'm, I'm sorry, these, these videos, I, I think I've, I've, I feel so much better now doing videos than I did when I started, because when I started, I felt like I had to do all of these things. And there was a point where I tried to go too technical in terms of how we talked about things. And I realized to myself, self, I could, I could talk to, uh, I could go on YouTube and talk to people about retiring early and hoping that they get the message and then more people retire early. But the reality is only about 1% um, of people are going to retire early. And it may be more, but I'm just using that, but it's a small percentage. But I think the expectation is that everybody has the opportunity to live their best life. And so if people could somehow take my experience and translate that into decisions they make, then hopefully they make a better, you know, you folks will make decisions that make you happy because at the end of the day, this is all about giving you just some different ways to look at it because at the, at the end of the day, um, we got a bunch of different people and the only thing we could see is, you know, I, I always say our eyes are made to look outwards. And so what ends up happening is we understand our own experience, but, and we don't share as, as adults and especially as men and especially as black men, we don't share our uh, emotional journeys with other people that look like us. And so this is an opportunity for me as a man, as a black man, as a person, as a human being, as your friend, to be able to just share those. And so, but I didn't have the capacity to do that because again, my life was a series of meeting, the meeting, the meeting, the meeting, figuratively speaking. And so, and, and the upshot of that is that all of my relationships uh, with my friends have, have, and my family have gotten, have gotten uh, exponentially better. Um, there's a lot more clarity. What, what, what I did find is there were, I did realize that there were people that were in my life that I had in my life because they fit a particular time frame, but I had the, the wherewithal to recognize that. And then I just understand that relationship is what it is. And I don't put a lot of priority on that because I want to have people around that support, love and, and respect me in a way that I cherish love and respect them. And I, a lot of us, we sacrifice a lot for others. And I think there's nothing wrong with sacrificing for others, but you want to sacrifice for others. Um, you want to sacrifice for those people that would also sacrifice for you because otherwise those people are just taking your resources. And then when you don't have those resources, guess what happens? You're left on the side uh, to fend for yourself. So, so those are the three pros that I found in my first year of retirement. Now I want to talk a little bit of, about some of the cons and, and I, I think it's, it's funny because they're, they seem simple, but I, I just can't find a lot of, uh, uh, deep, deep, heavy cons, but but these three are are fairly serious. So so the first con that I found is I, f I sometimes find myself regretting that I waited so long. And I know some of you are saying, uh, you know, you retired at fifty one, you are ahead of the curve on a lot of people, and I you know you almost I almost feel selfish for for saying that. But th here's the fact of it is that I didn't plan on retiring for until at least 2026, 2027. And the way that I got to 2023 was by asking myself or asking my financial advisor, what if I do this? What if I do this? What if we push it back a few months? What if we push it back a few months? What if we push it back a year? What if we push it back a few months? What if we push it back a year? 
and then got to the point where when we did the risk reward analysis, um, as, as an old friend of mine used to say, the juice was worth the squeeze. It made sense to go ahead and do it. And are there things that can go wrong? Sure. But are there levers in place that will help us manage that? Absolutely. And I didn't think I was going to be able to, and I think a lot of us feel this way. What am I going to do with my time? Uh, you know, how am I going to deal with, you know, how am I going to deal with, with different types of changes and, and issues? Am I going to get bored? Are my wife and I going to drive each other nuts? You know, all these different, I mean, these are real concerns. And, you know, some of you out there that share some of those, share with me some of those concerns because I, I'll do some content uh, coming up here where I'll talk about those things and I'll, I'll go into them. And I'll, I'll give you my honest perspective. As I said, I always say, if I care enough about you to answer your question, it'll always be the truth. I care about you and I will answer your questions as long as you're not trying to be contrarian for the sake of being contrarian. Um, the other con is that my friends are still working. Um, I have one friend that has since retired since I retired, but his reason for retiring, I think is different than mine. And so he finds himself still in the zone of having to keep himself busy and get in, in, engaged in a bunch of things. And so I think, you know, there's different buckets of people that retire. Some people retire because they want to go out and do the stuff that they want to do and, and take back control of their time, which is what I want to do. Some people retire because they don't like their job and they're burnt out. And I, I think that is a reason to retire. In my opinion, it's not the best reason to retire because when you just emotions, just like everything else, those are all temporary. And so then what happens when you get to that point where you don't want to be, uh, where you're not thinking about that job that was frustrating or, or being upset with work and you want to feel productive. And so it, it's all relative and people have different needs. But the rest of my friends, I'm calling them while they're working or we're waiting until the weekend to spend time or I just don't spend as much time with them because quite frankly, they're working and when they're not working, what I end up taking on is a lot of their stress because they're what they're decom what they're doing is they're decompressing from that time during the week. And so the fact that my friends are still working, I'm not gonna say it creates a disconnect because good friends are good friends. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, but it would just be nice if some if if my my close friends were in the same boat that I was in, because then we can all experience it together. We could just all live these stress free, living me vita loca experiences together. Uh, but I am fortunate to to my, that my wife is retired, and I'm able to share a lot with her. And you know, she's ultimately she's really my best friend. So, and then uh, the the third one. Is just and 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 I struggled with this one a little bit because one of the things that a lot of folks don't know about me, and I'm sure many of you don't, is that I've always been a guy that was wanted to be the normal person that made extraordinary things look easy. And so, as an example, when I was in college, I was in, uh, I was I was out at the clubs partying hanging with my buddies, kicking it, doing all the stuff, drinking and all that. Not, I mean, I wasn't an alcoholic or nothing like that, but, you know, I was out. I was having fun. And so I remember when I when graduation came, a buddy of mine asked me if I was going to be at this spot. And I said, no, I'm not going to be able to make it. This is when I was graduating from college. And I said, no, I'm not going to be able to make it. He says, why not? I said, I'm graduating tomorrow. He says, you're graduating from San Jose State? I said, yeah, I'm graduating from San Jose State tomorrow. He's like, no, you're not. But it's because even though I was out having fun, he didn't see that when I got home from uh, from the club that I was finishing up a paper that I had started working on. They didn't see that when I was riding two hours on the bus to get to school that I was in the back seat working on my homework. They didn't see the fact that I set my schedule up so that way I had gaps in my schedule so I could go sit in the music listening room and do my homework, write my papers, and do team projects and things like that. So they didn't they didn't see that. Well, a lot of that same type of uh, disbelief happened when I retired. And so there were people around me when I said, you know, I'm retired, you know, a lot of people because of my age and I don't think I look that old and, and people that are my age and older tell me that I don't look that old. But again, I'm not here to talk about myself, but they say I look young. 
And so they, the first thing people think is, no, this guy's not retired. He must have just lost his job. And I think I did a video on that way back in the day. And I don't think I did as good of a job articulating it because I didn't quite have my head around the feeling of it. But it's a great video, though. It's one of my most popular videos. And it, it talks about um, how people will respond when you retire. And, and perhaps I'll link this video to that one so that way you can go back and take a look at it. But the fact that people didn't believe me. And so I'd tell people, uh, pe either people that I met or people that I knew that I retired. And the first thing they default to is, oh, you must have gotten laid off. You must have lost your job. And it's funny because it's actually the opposite. I had uh, I had gotten to the, the pinnacle of my career as the chief human resources officer. I had just worked on a project that provided increases to everybody in the organization, including myself. So I was going to make the most money that I ever had. And uh, things were going, they were going as good as they could have gone. I mean, I didn't, the environment I was in probably wasn't the most conducive for me, but I could have left there to go someplace. In fact, I got phone calls and continue to get phone calls about other, about other positions. But I tell them I'm just not interested in going back into the rat race. And uh, a lot of it is, you know, not just, not just people that I worked with didn't believe me. It was my peers didn't believe me. Some of my friends were like, really, you're going to do that? And I, and I had one friend that said it best that I've known for about 30 years, probably one of my closest friends. And he says, you know, Saab, I, uh, I've known you for a long time. He's like, I'm happy for you, but I'm not surprised because he always saw behind the scenes what I was doing. It was one of my buddies that I used to be roommates with years ago. And he says, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised. And so it's just, and then I had another guy that I talked to um, that I, and, and this guy is, is one of the people that I, I kind of jettisoned, but he says, he asked me the question, are you still retired? I said, well, you, I, what is that supposed to mean? Right. So, you know, so you, you, you have to be prepared. And I realized that I, that I had to be prepared for those types of reactions because not everybody there's, there's layers to everything and not everybody is happy for you because some people were mad uh, you know, as, as a, there was a sign that says, you know, people love you but hate you because they can't be you. And some people, that's what they do. Some people, they just don't believe it. It's like, wow, it seems so far out of reach. And I didn't spend a lot of time telling people what I was doing in order to get to where it is that I got to because I, I just didn't need anybody around me uh, telling me or trying to dissuade me from it because I have a lot of friends now that are saying they're going to work until they're 70. And I said, I... I just didn't want to do that, and, and but I knew that a long time ago, so I took steps to to get to to the place that I am. So, so I hope this video is helpful for you. Uh, you know, three cons. I mean, I'm sorry, the three pros of retiring early. Um, you know, having more time and, and controlling my time, uh, having less stress, and and just being stress free, and increased mental clarity. I just, I'm I'm so. What's the song say? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Well, that's that's where I am. And then, you know, and then just some of those cons. I, and I think many of us, if I, 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 people ask me, what's the first thing I should do to get to retirement? And I, I say, assess your situation. Do an honest assessment of your situation. See where you are financially. See how you get out of any holes that you may have dug for yourself. And then figure out what it takes for you to sustain that and figure out how, where do I need to be in order to sustain that for an extended period of time. Um, you know, number two, your, your friends still, my friends are still working. And so, you know, people tell me all the time, my best friend always says, you know, we're not all retired and I, and I have to remind myself and it's okay. I'm, I get it. It makes sense, but it's just kind of funny because it, it, I don't necessarily find myself feeling a, an incredible loneliness. But you do get used to doing things by yourself and, and beating to your own drum, which I think is part of what helped me get to retirement in the first place. And then lastly, it's just that response you get from under other people and that uh, that lack of believability, I call it, and and understanding by, by other people that, that see that you've retired. Um, and, and some of them you know, some of you you don't know. So... Uh, so, you know, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off, but I, I do ask that if you, if you like this channel or you like the content and you, you want to see more, please feel free to like, and subscribe to the channel. I, I don't get into the habit of begging people to do it because I think, you know, those of you that have been rocking with me for this period of time, uh, know that 
you know, I always keep it real. I'm, I'm not going to give you any BS and, and I'm always going to keep it real. And I'm always going to tell you my own experience. And I, I, it's not my guess or my, my, um, idea that I'm going to try to create many me's because I want, I don't want you to be a mini me. I want you to be the best you. And I want you to go out into the world and have the confidence to, to be your best you 100% of the time and never have to apologize for anything that you do. Because again, it's about living your best life. And, and I'll leave on this note is, you know, re, it's not an expect, I, there's no expectation that you retire early, but there is an expectation that you live your best life. So on that note, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.